Astaf movie. It's a thing. It's popular. 12 episodes, 5 songs, 1 gold record, 1 book, 1 card game out now, 1 billion collective views, and 1 question. Why? How? What? That's actually three questions. Ow! Hey you, my name is Thomas Tomskar Ridgewell, and in 2008 I created Astaf Movie, a fast-paced, minimalistic animated sketch show which will soon see its 13th episode. Now I don't know about you, but... I don't really get it. How did a derivative lol random humor webtoon, which by all accounts should have passed its cultural sell-by date in the mid noughties stand the test of time and keep me observably well-fed into this most cursed decade? Today I'm going to determine exactly what makes Astaf Movie work, what's inside of them, what makes them tick, what people like about them, what the best jokes are, and what the worst jokes are. And when that is all done, I'm going to create the perfect Astaf Movie joke. <laughs> This is a stupid idea. Why am I doing this? I don't know. Something to do. Can't go outside. <laughs> now, to make sense of Aston Movie, I- ah! uh, Wait! I'm you from the future! The future? Ooh, how does 2020 end? It doesn't. Yeah, that scans. But that's not important right now. What matters is that I come from a future. A future that's terrible for one simple reason. Because you didn't promote Raid Shadow Legends in this video. The mobile game? Ah! You can also play it on desktop, you ignorant fool. Okay, ow. But I don't know anything about Raid Shadow Legends. It's a turn-based battle MMO RPG where you collect and upgrade champions and battle them. It's extremely popular. Sounds kind of stupid. Uh, well, it's not. There's hundreds of champions, each with their own unique skill trees and millions of artifacts to find. What does an artifact do? Also, they just rebalance the PvP to make it more competitive, and they introduce the forge so you can save time on crafting artifacts. I still don't even know what an artifact does. Well, you'll at least appreciate the graphics and the fact that you can play it in short or long bursts, making it perfect for pooping time. How do you know what part I like? I've never even played this game. Ah! Because you will. As if you sign up today, you'll get 50,000 silver, 50 gems, one energy refill, one clan boss key, <laughs> five mystery shards, 12 bleeple bloops, a one day XP booster, and a free champion. The executioner. You definitely made one of those up. <laughs> How dare you? It's true, I made up the bleeple bloops. All right, so where do I play it? Oh, that part's easy. Just click the link in the description. But what if I'm French? Vous trouverez le lien dans la description. And if I'm German? Click in the link in the beschreibung. Wait, I never asked. What happens if I don't promote Raid Shadow Legends? Oh, your butt falls off. Oh no, my butt! <laughs> click at the link in the beschreibung now to play Raid Shadow Legends, and you can find all your treasure here. It's back! You did it, me! Ah! Anyway, to make sense of Aston Movie, I'm first going to need to break it down into its bare essentials, its comedic composition, its secret source. Between the 12 episodes, three deleted scenes, one sponsored video, and one Skyrim parody, there have been 226 sketches in the Aston Movie series thus far. And because I hate fun, I've compiled them into one gigantic spreadsheet. This is observably a cry for help, right? Like, this isn't normal. Now, those 226 sketches all follow one simple comedic principle. The subversion of expectations. In short, surprise the audience with an unexpected Outback Steakhouse. Hey, big steakhouse. Uh, guess he's steak here. <laughs> you think he's gonna fall down? Up he goes. You think being stabbed is bad? Not this time. You think butterflies are harmless? This one will bang your wife. True story, don't want to talk about it. But to truly understand why these subversions are funny, I need to dig a little deeper. But Tom, you ask, surely you wouldn't be crazy enough to try and break down the undefinable subjective makeup of comedy? Yes, I am. We don't have a second camera. We don't have a second camera. But yes, I am. First, we have a true random, where the punchline is completely untethered to the setup, where nothing in the buildup leads to the outcome. Hey, cool hat. Then there's literal outcomes, because when you're expecting the unexpected, sometimes getting exactly what's promised is its own surprise. I'm feeling carsick. There's wordplay, because certain words and phrases can mean multiple things. Jimmy, take out the dog. Yes, mother. For a walk, Jimmy. Dark turns. What a wholesome and harmless situation. Sure would be a shame if something bad would have happened to it. Got your nose. <laughs> Look out, he's got a nose. Violence is funny. It is. 
Parody. Self-contained jokes are great, but sometimes it's nice to fall back on a well-established worldwide trope that it's safe to assume the audience already knows. Knock knock! Who's there? <laughs> that door! Sequels and callbacks. Recurrences of characters or setups that have appeared earlier in the Astro Movie series itself. I like trains. <laughs> Funny visuals, where the animation or the weird visuals themselves are an integral part of the joke. <laughs> Funny voices for intentionally over-the-top or ill-fitting performances. But mother, I love him. Thing talking that shouldn't talk. Because that thing shouldn't talk. I used to be a cow. And finally, anticlimaxes and awkward pauses, because sometimes the absence of wackiness is wacky in and of itself. Throughout the series, every single one of the 226 sketches uses at least one, but more often multiple, of these comedic devices, except for two. One which is a pure subversion of expectation, and another which is a nonsensical paradox. But while this tells us what types of jokes are in the Astro Movie series, it doesn't tell us what's actually in those jokes. So what are some common occurrences or themes in the Astro Movie series? What's that, Mr. Gun? You want to see what's inside my ear? Okay. It's beautiful. Death can be abrupt, shocking, chaotic, unexpected, and therefore shares a lot of its genetic makeup with comedy. Or maybe I just need to see a therapist, but before we can ascertain exactly how significant the untimely and abrupt demise of a character is to the Astro Movie series, we must first define death. For a character to die in Astro Movie, they must transition from an inarguable state of being alive to one of certain death. Hit by a train? Dead. Shot in the face? Dead. Blown to smithereens, neck snapped, decapitated, dead, dead, and dead. However, consumed whole, not dead. As we have seen over and over in the Astro Movie series, characters can fully consume one another, only to regurgitate them an entire episode later, unharmed, in what can only be described as an inadvertent introduction to Vor. But we'll get back to that later. I don't, I'm not ready for that conversation. If all else fails though, just look to the eyes and the universal language of cartoons. X means dead. However, for this data to really reveal something, the circumstance of a character's death is just as significant as its cause. So, we've got accidental deaths. An act of God is a viable synonym for a freak accident, and in case you're wondering, yes, in the Astro Movie universe, I am God. We've got murder, the premeditated, intentional killing of one character by another. How do we know it's premeditated? <laughs> Look into those beady little soulless eyes and tell me they're not planning a murder at any given time. There's suicide, the voluntary, premature termination of one's own life. Does a character knowingly carry out an action that gets them killed? If so, we've got a suicide. However, what if they merely express a desire or an intent to kill themselves, but never actually carry the act out? Well, if that's the case, we'll just bump it to our fourth and final category of death, suicidal intent. But I want to die! <laughs> Cartoons. With those terms defined, let's take a look at our 226 sketches and see what falls where. Tree powers activate! Is he still alive when he turns into a tree? Well, according to Debbie S. Miller's 2002 thesis, are trees alive? Yes. I like trains. <laughs> Maybe after the first time, one could believe that the I Like Trains kid had no idea a train would hit him, but the second time? Now that's what I call suicide. Pianos! Suicide? Murder? No. I did this. Me. God. I like trains. Oh, no, 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 wait! Something has changed. He's learned to control his powers. He even smiles. This is murder. Quick, shoot me in the face! Euthanasia, a mercy kill at the request of the victim, but unfortunately not protected by the law. A suicide, but also a murder. Oh, oh he says, an accident, surely not planned. Not planned by him, at least. <laughs> My god, an intentional self-detonation. A murder-suicide, this changes everything. Wait, did he want the man to step on him, or merely want him to stop? Did he know the car would land there? Does Mind Tuttle know my intentions? Does he know the will of God? Oh. She is merely held within the cheeks. No bite has been taken. She lives. Man, I suck at this game! An accident? Grow up. A murder. He is reborn, and his powers have grown. He craves chaos and mass death. Okay! No jump! Encouraging suicide, but is it murder? Well, according to the cases Commonwealth vs. Michelle Carter and R. V. Morant, yes. <laughs> An accident? The coroners would certainly say so, but that ball knows what he did. Save me, super guy! No. You're a dick! 
He could have helped, but he didn't. Is that murder? Hey, Legal Eagles, it's time to think like a lawyer. Today, I wanna to cover a situation that we all find ourselves in all the time. When you come upon a person who's hanging off of a ledge and you're a superhero, if that person falls, it's not considered murder. Generally, we don't owe a duty of care to random strangers. Now, unless the superhero created that situation, he or she doesn't have a duty to save that person. Superheroes don't owe you anything. Be sure to like and subscribe, smash that like button, well, laws are always good and just. I mean, why else would they be laws? <sighs> so, what tasty data have we dug up? Well, we have 26 skits featuring accidental deaths, 41 with murders, 18 with suicides, and 12 with suicidal intent, with a total body count of... Uh... Okay, so judging by the number of windows, there's probably about 28 seats in there, so that's two cabin crew, two pilots, so that's 32 in total, 34 dead. Well, if the tree is alive, then he's not dead. Okay, the minimum crew number for a ship that size is probably one, two, three, four. Okay, four, so five total. 131 deaths, meaning that a character dies roughly every 1.7 sketches, which according to the Geneva Convention makes me a war criminal. Oh. Of course, death isn't the only misfortune to befall our beady-eyed protagonist, so let's punch in some punches. Yeah, what the, oh, what the hell is wrong with you? And also kicks and mutilations. I really ought to see a therapist. There's fatal injuries and impending demise, for when a character doesn't explicitly die in the sketch, but... Come on. Come on. Oh, you stole my lungs. There's non-fatal injuries, because what doesn't kill you makes you stronger is a lie. It's That's not true. You lied to me. There's violence against or by children, because the corruption of innocence is tight. <laughs> I'm gonna get ya! Explosions. And the use of weapons. But what exactly is a weapon? When is a kitten not a kitten? When it's being weaponized against a deadly allergy. As we've established, the I Like Trains Kids first murder. I wanna be a pie! Billy, no! What killed Billy? Was it the oven? Was it the pieification? We'll never know. Cheese? Weapon. Muffins? Weapon. Aeroplane? Weapon. Envelope? Nah, why not? What does this leave us with? 81 imminent deaths, 35 non-fatal injuries, 30 instances of child violence, 12 explosions, 45 uses of a weapon, and my absolute assurance that the little girl who gets kicked to the moon does not die up there, because after all, Desmond survived, and who do you think ate him? Now, murder is great. But what about all the other things that we often see and hear in Astov movie? The types of characters or creative decisions that happen over and over again and kind of make up the audiovisual language of the series. I don't want to put as much effort into this bit, so I'm just going to kind of rush through it. Wee! We got music. Electric guitar, music. Train horn, not music. Slide whistle, music. Slamming into a piano, not music. Trumpet dude, music. Big fart, not music. That's 52 pieces of music. But what about celebrity cameos where I brought in another YouTuber, quite frankly, because I know that they're gonna help the views and make the video better. Markiplier, Jax Films, Jaden Animations, The Odd Ones Out, Jacksepticeye, Aaron Hansen, Kylie Minogue, Dan and Phil, Vsauce. Oh God, I've just dropped all these names everywhere. But all in all, there's 54 instances of celebrity cameos. But what about uses of color? Blood, that's color. Rainbows, that's colors. Pink rainbows, that's pink colors. Skin tones, that's people colors. Grayscale, that's not a color. Grow up. That's 36 uses of color. But what about the word hey? That's 48 hey's. But what about babies? What's a baby? It's someone that's been born that isn't toddling yet. How many of those we got? Those aren't babies, those are cakes. <laughs> baby heard, but baby not seen. No baby. Babies can't walk, but this one's technically not walking. He's just flailing in a direction. You can have it. This one's a baby, but it's also food. Hey, baby, you're looking fine. Hey, thanks, Jerry, you too. Okay, now we're pushing it. That's 12 babies, but what about animals, which for the sake of this will just be any organic non-human creature? <laughs> yeah, sure, that's an animal. Have you seen my pony? Pony mentioned, but not seen. No animal. Me neither. Duck faces, but not actual ducks. I used to be a cow.
He was a cow, but now he's a food. Bees are animals. On my way to eat your skin. Talking plants are also animals. Nothing matters. 41 animals, but what about food you didn't ask? Is milk food? No, it's a sauce. Marmite am food. Gun? No. Cake? Oh. Is he food? No, he's vor. This is also vor. And this is reverse vor. Okay, look, what is vor? According to this article by Anna Valens, it is a fantasy, often sexual, that involves a person or a creature orally consuming another, usually not eating them, just popping them inside. And there are a few examples of this in the Astaf movie series. <laughs> Those cats got vored. You wanna eat me? He wants to get vored so hard. That's some hat vor. I like trains! All aboard the choo-choo train. <laughs> I guess she couldn't afford to pay for her meal. Have you seen my lemons? I mean, come on. What have I done? With Astaf characters seemingly being able to consume and expel an infinite amount of mass, the series seems to be a pretty prime candidate for Vore. And while I was not aware of this, not intending to depict it to the masses, it still seemingly has happened. <laughs> and if I've been inadvertently preaching the gospel of Vore, I wondered what other kinks I could have been unknowingly championing. So I reached out to Anna Valens, the author, or Vorther, of that article from earlier and asked if she could scan through those 226 sketches and see if there are any other explicit kinks or just kink fuel that one could gleam from the series. So what do we have here? Unbirth? Cuckolding. Inflation. Macro crush. Oh my god, this is just Ask Movie 12. What about the whole series? 78 sketches? That's over a third of them. Oh my god, what have I done? Who's letting their kids watch this stuff? Lastly, I was curious about the emotions expressed by the characters in the series. After reading a whole bunch of books, I was able to ascertain that there are six key emotions. Anger, fear, surprise, disgust, joy, and sadness. And while some Google results, I mean books, disagree on this, these are the six I went in search of. You're fat! Body positivity is important. Hmm. He didn't know what to expect, but he was disappointed nonetheless. Who parked their car on my sandwich? I sure hate it when this relatable thing happens. I am a stegosaurus. Only a single frame, but there it is. Hey, I'm not like other girls. Ooh, an internalized contempt for other women? I have brain damage. This little guy doesn't know what's going on at any given moment. And these two sketches somehow feature no emotion whatsoever. Just like my ex-wife. <laughs> And with that, I learned that joy was the most commonly expressed emotion in the Astro Movie series, followed by surprise, then anger, then fear, then sadness, then disgust. All that thought of feelings got me wondering, how do I feel? So I added one final column to the spreadsheet, which was to ascertain how I actually felt about every single one of the 226 sketches. Was I proud of it? Was I ashamed of it? Or did I feel extremely neutral towards it? And turns out I'm just nowhere near as joyful as the characters in the series. So. The spreadsheet was complete. 226 sketches, 40 columns of attributes, 9,040 yes or no data points. The whole series laid bare. I now know that the average Asta movie sketch is 5.2 seconds long and features two characters. The further we get into the series, fear, food, violence, and random outcomes are on the decline, whereas wordplay, parodies, and literal outcomes are on the rise, as are babies for some reason. I guess I'm broody now. But all this could do so far was tell me what was the most common, not what was the most gooden. Remember, I'm trying to figure out what makes Astaf Movie popular here. I'm trying to make the perfect joke. So we made a website. The way the site worked was simple. Present a user with two sketches at random and ask them to pick their favorite. The one they chose would go up in the rankings and the one they didn't would go down. We left the site up for 80 hours and in that time had 2.2 million counted votes, meaning that each sketch was shown around 20,000 times and had ample opportunity to prove its worth and make daddy proud. I don't know why I said that, that felt bad. Before I reveal the most popular sketches though, here are some of the interesting things we learned when comparing the definitive rankings to the data on the spreadsheet. One, it turns out people don't actually like murder all that much. If a sketch featured an intentional act of violence from one character to another, it was more likely to be ranked lower. Two, people really like suicide. Killing someone else, monstrous, heinous, unthinkable. Killing yourself though, 
hilarious, relatable meme. My god, we all need therapy. Three, people generally didn't enjoy anticlimaxes, vor, and blood. That's fine, who needs blood anyway? Four, people really like funny voices, literal outcomes, and angry characters, so... Oh, I'm really angry and I think I'm going to explode! Bleh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they want, right? This is easy. Also, here are some pie-flavored pie charts using data from just the top 50 ranked sketches showing which tropes often came out on top. Wow, circles! Now, I don't want to dwell on the lowest ranked sketches too much because there did seem to be a correlation between how new and therefore less known the sketches were and how poorly they performed, but I would be remiss for not mentioning the four worst ranked sketches. From least worst to most worst, we have Farting Butt 4. Oh! Not racist, but okay. Farting butt too. I I love you, but farting butt one. I am going to open this door. And farting butt three. Guess that's why they call it the bottom of the pile. <laughs> So, without further ado, here are the 10 most popular sketches. At number 10, we have Dr. Nerd. Is anybody here a doctor? I am. Well, you're a nerd! Ninth is Trumpet License. Hey, you got a license for that? You'll never take me alive! In eighth, we have Standing Up School. Hello, and welcome to Standing Up School. And you fail. Seventh, for some reason, is Mugged. You get mugged, kid. No, you're getting mugged. Ah, how the hell does that even work? Sixth is Carrots. Hey, did you know that carrots are good for your eyesight? You lied to me. In fifth is Telephone Robbery. This is a robbery. Fourth is Take Out the Dog. Jimmy, take out the dog. Yes, mother. For a walk, Jimmy. Third is Goodbye World. Bye, world. Okay, Jim, I'll see you around. Where are you going? Oh, oh no. Oh, that's not what I thought he meant by that at all. Second is Pie Flavored Pie. I baked you a pie. Oh boy, what flavor? Pie flavor. <laughs> and finally, the number one, the numero uno, people's favorite sketch, which honestly came as a surprise to me, play that one. Hey, Bobby, play that one about falling down the stairs. Sure thing, Johnny. <laughs> I love it! What's genuinely so surprising to me about this top 10 list is that there are no recurring characters. No I Like Trains Kid, Mind Turtle, Suicidal Muffin. Aside from Standing Up School and Pie Flavored Pie, none of these are jokes that I was really even aware of were fan favorites. Perhaps they're the least polarizing sketches. They have the least annoying elements. They're the least overexposed through merchandise. Maybe they're the most self-contained. Maybe when the website recontextualized them as still images, they worked better as comics? Or maybe they are just the best jokes and the ones people like the most. Or maybe you're all just wrong. I don't know. So now that we've plugged the rankings into the spreadsheet, we asked the computer to look at what the most popular elements are and decide what it thought should be the most popular sketch in the Aston Movie series so far. And it came back with, don't touch that cactus. And given that Don't Touch That Cactus came in at the rankings at number 11, I guess it has surprisingly good taste. So we then asked the computer to predict what it thinks the most perfect Astaf movie joke should contain. And here's what it gave us. Three characters, an accidental death, a suicide, suicidal intent, a non-fatal injury, violence, a weapon, fear, anger, and surprise, at least one animal, someone saying the word hey, and a celebrity guest. The time is finally here. I have the truth in my hands, the objective formula for the greatest asto no, the greatest joke of all time, proving that not only was this video not a waste of time, but my whole life's work was actually building up to something. So, without wasting any more time, I present to you the greatest Astaf movie joke of all time. <laughs> hey, little doggy. Oh no! I'm still alive! Oh. I've wasted my life. Hey you, thanks for watching. I meant what I said at the start of this video. Our card game Muffin Time is out now. You can find it at muffintimegame.com and I hope you enjoy Astro Movie 13 when it comes out in the very near future. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later. Tom Scott out.